Welcome to Chem 21 Labs, Fermentation and Simple Distillation of Ethanol. We'll start with setting up our fermentation, getting all of our materials together. We start from the left, we have our pasture's salts, solution of calcium hydroxide, our flask, our sucrose, and our yeast. We'll start by weighing out the sucrose in a pre-teared beaker, then we'll weigh the yeast in its own pre-teared beaker. Then we will add our sucrose to our flask in water and slowly add the water up to 200 mLs. 200 milliliters of water won't quite dissolve the sucrose initially, but we can go ahead and dissolve as much as we can in 200 mLs of water and then add our yeast you want to mix the yeast to wet it thoroughly and continue to dissolve the little bit of sucrose that's left. Once the yeast is wet into the solution, it won't completely dissolve. We can go ahead and add the pasture salts next. The pasture salts help the yeast survive during the fermentation process. We're using bread yeast here for this lab because it's very efficient at making the alcohol under just about any condition. Mixing the pasture salts in, we then go ahead and seal up our flask with a stopper and one hole out to let out the gas as it forms. We keep the mixture airtight so that no air is allowed to go back into our fermentation. To complete the seal, we fill a test tube with some calcium hydroxide solution and place the other end of the tube into the calcium hydroxide. This means that no air can go back in through the tube since the tube will be under the solution and we will see the bubbles exiting this tube as carbon dioxide is formed. We want to make sure that the tube is fully under the level of the liquid in the test tube so that no air can get in. This provides an airlock to the system and keeps us from undergoing further oxidation of the ethanol to acetic acid. This is the solution right after everything was sealed in and within an hour the bubbling had begun. The video is sped up just a bit, it exaggerates how fast the bubbles were forming, but even within an hour you can see that carbon dioxide is starting to be formed. The solution is also starting to get a little bit foamy from all of the gas that's being produced. Letting this sit for about 10 days and after that time, the fermentation is complete. No further bubbling is seen. We also see a precipitate inside the calcium hydroxide bubbler tube. And at this point, we're ready to set up our simple distillation. So we have our fermentation. We have a ceramic heater, some water tubes, a heating a regulator device, as well as then each individual piece of glassware, including a 500 milliliter round bottom, a condenser, a distillation head, a thermometer adapter, and a vacuum adapter with the associated clips.
plugging in the voltage regulator for the ceramic heater. Then we can plug the ceramic heater into the back of that regulator. The ceramic heater is placed on the lab jack to get it at the appropriate height. The flask is clamped tightly to the back of the hood. We have a iron ring to support the condenser, which in this case is now in a roughly horizontal but slightly downward pointing direction. Very different from a reflux. In this case, it will condense the vapors and they will run downhill through the vacuum adapter into our collection device, which is a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. We have to put on a thermometer adapter at the top so we can take the temperature during the distillation. The thermometer adapter consists of these two pieces, one glass with a ground glass joint and a rubber piece. We also have clips to hold everything into place, keep it from falling apart. Once everything is set up, we can take our fermentation mixture, settled from the yeast down to the bottom, and we can pour this out into the distillation flask. The distillation flask will contain some of the yeast, but this will remain there during the distillation process. Remember, we have roughly 200 milliliters of water plus the sugar and yeast. We've added some boiling stones to the flask. We can attach the rest of the apparatus and then raise the heater up to the 500 milliliter round bottom flask. We want to make sure that the flask is pointing straight up, the distillation head is perfectly vertical so that the condensation will take place in a downward trajectory. The distillation head is designed so that the condenser will attach at an angle slightly downward. We then place the thermometer so that it will read the temperature of the vapors that are entering the condenser. begin heating at a fairly high rate, around 50 to 60 percent. We also attached our water hoses, the lower one going to the water inlet, and the upper one going to the drain in the sink. You can see the iron ring supporting the condenser. Once we get a good flow of water, we'll be set. Once the air is out of the line completely, we have a nice smooth flow of water. Make sure that the hoses don't kink, create pressure, and then we can place our graduated cylinder which will measure the distillate. Notice that the vacuum adapter has a port which is not being used since we are doing a atmospheric pressure distillation. You can see that the mixture, although it's boiling, the thermometer still is reading room temperature. point the vapors are starting to enter the distillation head. Temperature is just beginning to rise above room temperature as the vapors reach the thermometer. You can see there's some reflexing going on where the vapors are condensing and falling back down. You 
Once the va vapor temperature equilibrates and the distillation head is warm enough, the vapors will enter the condenser and condense back to a liquid and run down into our graduated cylinder. We'll be looking for the vapors as they just go into the distillation head and start to head toward the condenser. We should see droplets of liquid starting to form on the sidearm. You can see the temperature is rising quickly at this point. Inside the distillation head is starting to look a little wet. No droplets yet. Now you can start to see condensation happening, heading towards the condenser. Liquid will start to build up right at the joint between the two pieces, and eventually the liquid will fall back down into the condenser and run into our graduated cylinder. There's our first drops of distillate right there. And there's our first drop. Looks as though the first drop came into our graduated cylinder just below 85 degrees Celsius. Every two milliliters, we will record the temperature. You can see the temperature rises rather quickly and then forms a steady rise about half a degree seems like each two mLs, roughly speaking. When the liquid line reaches two mLs, we'll record the temperature again. You can see here this is a sped up video of how fast the droplets were forming and falling down into our graduated cylinder. 89. See now lots of condensations taking place right at the opening to the condenser there. We pushed the simple distillation fairly hard to get 50 milliliters distilled as quickly as possible without overboiling our flask. It's about a drop a second. Sometimes two drops per second. Four milliliters. 89.5. Each time 10 milliliters is collected, we have to empty the graduated cylinder into a larger graduated cylinder. Yes, I'm not entirely sure. Do this five total times. 10 mLs have already been collected. Here's the procedure for emptying the 10 ml graduated cylinder. You can fold the condenser and vacuum adapter over to hold our condensing liquid for a few moments. Empty that into the larger graduated cylinder then rotate everything back in. Rolling rather rapidly now you can see that appearance of the vapor is quite a bit different now that the temperature is over 95. We're getting close to the 50 mLs collected on our last 10 mLs. Even so, the drop rate has not changed that much. Once we reach 50 mLs, we can turn off the heat 
and lower the lab jack down to remove the heat from the large boiling flask. We will discard any further liquid that collects in the graduated cylinder at this point. And now it's time to measure the density of our distillate. We start by weighing a small Erlenmeyer flask with a piece of parafilm. Record the empty mass into your notebooks. The density measurement is important because it tells us the percentage of alcohol, both by mass and by volume, that's found in our distillate. Recall that about 12% alcohol was expected after the fermentation. We hope to enhance that to between 40 and 60% at this point in the procedure. Once we have a 40 to 60% mixture, we will then, in the next video, take it on and fractionally distill it to, in an attempt to get pure, as pure ethanol as possible. We use a volumetric pipette to get exactly 10.00 mLs into our Erlenmeyer flask. We can then re-weigh the 10 mLs, and from that get the density of this mixture. Emptying the 10 mLs in. It's all good. Mm -hmm. Once it's finished, we'll quickly cover the flask with the parafilm again. Tightly this time. <laughs> and we'll have our weight by difference of the 10 mLs of this ethanol solution. We return the 10 mLs back to the distillate and move that on to the next step in the procedure. Thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for fractional distillation.